Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may well be acquainted by my pug, who's decided to walk in the room whilst I'm recording since he's fucking bored. So if you do hear any weird snoring or grunting sounds in the background, it's possibly him just trying to breathe. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Now for today's video, we're covering my all-time favourite deck, Light Sworn. Second to none, Light Sworn is my go-to every single format. I will always have a go at trying to make a build that is fun, explosive, not usually too expensive, not usually too intense. I just want to go off like a fucking glass cannon and hope for the best. And usually at least once a format, I'll take it to Locals and just see how I get on. Now, of course, Locals isn't really a thing at the moment due to the thing that's going on in the world that I can't talk about. However, we can play online and that's exactly what we've been doing with this deck. Now, again, it is a glass cannon, so I'm not going to pretend to you that it's super competitive, but it does explode and go absolutely fucking crazy when it feels like. And let's be honest, if you're still playing Light Sworn, that's all you should really be trying to do anyway. But today's build it is one that considers budget, and it is a chaos build. Despite the fact that that may seem oxymoronic, they can work quite well together. There's only a few expensive cards in here. The rest are actually really, really cheap for the most part. You can certainly get cheaper printings of most of these cards. But I digress, I'm getting off the point entirely here. Now as a quick note before we get stuck into the profile, if you are feeling inspired by today's video and you're looking to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles or even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link in the description to their eBay store and if you use that link, you'll net yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so as promised for today's build, we are taking a slightly more budget-friendly approach. There's very few cards that kind of break the bank in here. Chaos Creator can be a little bit more expensive. Uh, and the same for the Magical Ruler that is in the extra deck. But for the rest of the cards, they are mostly relatively budget-friendly. And if nothing else, you can at least get cheaper prints of them. Again, apologies if you do hear any crazy noise in the background. My pug is sat right beneath my microphone. So there's a good chance he gets his ass fucking mullering stuff around and making a ton of noise. But I digress, let's get stuck into the deck profile. So we start off with a single copy of the Chaos Creator. This is all we really need in this build. One is perfectly sufficient. It comes up really nicely. It does a really good job of getting things going, uh, being able to re rebuild your board, and so on and so forth. After that, we have a single copy of Chaos Dragon Levianir. There was always temptation to play more copies of this. Being able to rip cards out of your opponent's hand or, of course, summon it and then get more bodies on board is a really nice touch. Just a really, really strong card. And, of course, it helps if you have to go second and break some boards. After that, we have Gizmeka Orochi, which, of course, is a fantastic card. It can be sent to the graveyard to give you more extension. It can also save you when you're in a bit of a grind game and get you to a point where you can actually claw back into the game. Something that not many other cards offer, the likes of Fairy Tale Snow, of course, course long gone after that we have a small chaos dragon package this does spread out throughout the decks it's kind of annoying uh unfortunately just sort on this thing is mong it out a little bit so we've got a single copy of collapse serpent a single copy of wyver burster of course these are at one each so we can only run them at one but that's exactly what we're going to do the two strong not to include in my opinion we should definitely be taking advantage of them. And then after that, we have Red Eyes, Darkness, Metal Dragon. Of course, it's had an errata, but it is still a very, very strong card for any kind of dragon-based deck. And of course, being a Chaos dragon-based deck, what's not to love about that? This card needs to be in here. We've then got the Brothers of Destruction, Dark Refa, and Armageddon Knight. These are pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. Again, really, really strong options for just sending stuff to the grave and sending your plays and going from there. We have two copies of Malicious because, of course, if we're running the Two Brothers of Destruction, taking advantage of this card as well is something that we should definitely do. It's a bit of free link climbing, of course. It can be used to special summon your Greffa by dumping it into the grave, banishing it from there, and you've got instantly a link to Amongst other things, of course, this is incredibly strong and something you should definitely consider including in your builds. Now, Chaos Betrayer is a reason that I've actually considered putting Beatrice into the extra deck in here. You could definitely do so if you want to cut some other cards to fit it in. And Chaos Betrayer, of course, with Malicious will easily allow you to go into her and go off from there. So it's definitely something you could consider. Chaos Betrayer is just free body on board. Of course, banishing stuff is only a good thing in this deck, and you can go off from there. I really like it as an option, but again, if you choose not to include it, that's entirely up to you. 
After that, we have Omni Dragon Brotor. This is a throwback to the older versions of Dragon Link. I can't remember if the newer versions are using this or not, but this is again another way to get free extenders into your hand, put stuff into your grave. It becomes a free recurring body. It's all of the good stuff that you could possibly need. We then have two copies of Chaos Valkyria. I think the two is absolutely fine. You could up this to three if you can find the space, but again, I thought 44 cards was about right, so it's not super inconsistent because that is a bit of an issue with the deck. Uh, you could go up to like a 60 card build if you really wanted to, and there are definitely some possibilities of viabilities of things that you could use to do that, but in a 40-ish card build, I think two of these is perfectly fine. We have triple copies of Starly Schaefer. If it becomes a normal summon, it's not the end of the world. There are a lot of normal summon options in here, which can be a bit of a downshot, but most of these act as extenders will have other effects that make them worth having in the deck beyond that. And Starly Schaefer is a good example of that. Of course, it can be a one-card Baby Dragon Engine, which is an option that you can consider. But of course, it's also a light, so there's that benefit there. And the fact that you can banish it to get Levinir into your hand. We then move on to our Light Sworn engine. So we've got triple copies of Wolf because Millinus is just still too damn fucking strong not to include. We've got triple copies of Raiden, the best normal summon in the Light Sworn engine. In fact, probably the best card outside of Charge of Light Brigade. Definitely the best monster that you could include. So three of those is an absolute necessity. We've got a single copy of Lila for back row removal. This is one that I always include anyway, but back row is far more prevalent at the moment. So having this as an option there is something to consider. Just a single copy of Felice. Honestly, again, we're not playing a pure variant, so the chances that you mill this off a monster effect rather than a spell or trap effect, or just a spell effect, I should say, in the case of this deck, is much, much slimmer. So running just a one copy in here seems to be perfectly fine. And then triple copies of Lumina. This could potentially be cut down in the space uh, just to include some additional extenders if that's something you wanted to do but i do quite like having the three in here again just a way of recurring bodies and getting extra material on board we then have a performage package in here we have the damage juggler and the trick clown uh, you could expand this to go into like hat tricker and the like if you wanted to maybe include some more rank options but for this particular build i don't want to focus on rank spam that is something i usually do in dedicated builds so just the two of these Again, they just give you another light option that's another type, so it can help you go into Curious, they can help you go into Rank 4s, uh, and they just help extend all your plays. And then our final two monsters in the deck here, Zephyros, of course, if it goes to Grave, an easy way to just bounce something and summon it out. Again, making it a bit easier to make Rank 4s and so on. And then Plague Spread is just very, very strong at the moment. If you have access to Halka Fibrax, it makes this even better. But this can help make 8s very, very easily. It can also be free material on board if you need it. And then moving on to our spell cards in the deck, we've got Triple Solar Recharge, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, Digging Deep, Milling Cards is always a good option, Triple Copies of Charge of Light Brigade, you get to search and you get to mill for cost, which is just insane, Triple Copies of Chaos Space, this card does absolutely everything you could possibly need in this deck, and then we've got our three power one-offs in here, we've got Foolish Barrel, Rota, and Monster Reborn, I think these are all pretty self-explanatory, Foolish Barrel being a great extender, a great starter, all of that good stuff, pretty much everything in this deck is happy to be in the grave. Rotor, because we have so many warrior options, is pretty self-explanatory. And Monster Reborn, again, much like Foolish Burial, can be a great extender, can be a great starter card, it can be everything you need. Or, of course, if your opponent fluffs it and leaves something good in their grave, you can go ahead and snatch that as well. We then move on to the extra deck, and this is where it started to get really tight. There were so many different options I wanted to include, and of course wanting to include the Dragon Engine in here was something that needed to be done. So, of course, that takes up a lot of space in and of itself. Now apologies if it sounds a bit weird in here now with the jump in sound, that's because my dog has decided to take a massive shit in this room whilst I'm trying to record. Thank you very much Bertie, fuck you. Now anyway, before I was really distracted by the massive stinky shit in the room, we've got a single copy of Abyss Dweller and a single copy of Minerva. These are our rank options, again, you can go for more of these if you want to. I think a single copy of Minerva is good because it helps build up your board, helps you get stuff into the grave, all of that good stuff. And of course, drawing cards is always good. Uh, Abyss Dweller is probably the best generic rank for you. You could include something like Bagooska in case you're feeling particularly susceptible, but honestly, if you're not seeing enough to play in this deck, something's gone horribly wrong. We have a single copy of Michael because it's a Light Sworn deck and I really just wanted to include him, really. There's no other reason than that. But he's a generically good card. He's a good bit of spot removal. He's a Light Sworn, all of that good stuff. The Chaos Ruler is basically just painful choice on legs, so again, what's not to love about that? Borrowed Savage can give you a generic negate to play with just during your early turn. So, of course, if you go first, you can set up a really strong going first board. Soyuja helps you dig deep, it helps you put bricks back, and it helps you go through the Guard Dragon plays without locking yourself out too heavily. The Guard Dragons themselves, I think these are pretty self-explanatory, and much the same for Spheres. You could run a bunch of Spheres targets in here if you wanted to, but then you might as well just play Dragon Link. 
Spiral Sword is another way to get rid of all those dragons and go about your plays, but of course it can help you just kill in one turn. Curious is just curious, I really don't need to explain this card, and if I do, you're fucking crazy. We've got Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and I'll include the IP Masquerader at this point, because these are usually going to be your targets for it. Of course, they're good interruption, good utility cards, and all of that. And then finally, we have a single copy of Appaloosa in here, just a very strong, generic monster negate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for today's video. Thank you very much for making it this far. You're one of the few who has managed to have the guts to make it all the way through this video. Now, if you have made it this far into the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough that you've hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you can possibly look away. In either case, though, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Now, again, as noted before, we are doing a slew of deck profiles due to the thing that's going on in the world. That, again, I can't mention due to monetization. However, we do normally do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, locals vlogs, and event vlogs, and all the other good stuff you could possibly want from a terrible clickbait YouTuber. Again, in either case, though, hopefully you've liked the content enough to stick around, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.